Okay, so we have arrived at Bravos, and we are now about to head into the tavern and hopefully find whoever this quest giver may be. Now, of course, I have not been here before, so I am unaware of who may give such a quest. I think speaking to one of the unique NPCs in the tavern would probably be something that we want to check out first. Oh my! Excuse me! <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> we definitely want to avoid that fellow, and <laughs> yes, we're probably going to... Oh my. Excuse me. Okay, it appears that the tavern is not the place for such an honorable gentleman such as Elias Mormont. But yes, we will be heading into the castle, and now, many of you did actually tell me who the fellow that I need to speak to is. Now, I'm pretty sure it's going to be this guy over here. Is this the fellow? Maybe. I am Elias Mormont, Chancellor of the Iron Bank of Bravos. But once I was a slave owned by the city of Atlantis. Ah, there we are. This might be the fellow. When I did not cry out while the hot iron scorched my flesh, they took all the toes on my left foot. Every day I was beaten and my masters would exploit my body at that will. No! How dare you? I escaped on a merchant vessel before I reached my manhood and arrived in Bravos. I sold my body at the docks until I had enough coin to invest in a small fishing boat. I continued to hoard my silver and eventually I became the master of the most powerful bank in the world. But I still remember my childhood. Every day I remember it, and I think of those who still toil in the shadow of the black walls of Atlantis, all those who die beneath the walls, all those who are tortured for looking the wrong way. Okay, well, yes, all men must die, I suppose. All men must serve as I have served the Iron Bank of Bravos. I now mean to serve the slaves of Atlantis. Aha, so this is the fellow that I need to speak to. Great. Okay, what do you intend to do? Yes, you, however, should you conquer Valantis and put an end to the abomination of slavery, the Iron Bank of Bravos will reward you. We are more powerful than all of the rest of the banks in the known world combined. And if you do this for me, you will have a great reward. Oh my goodness, okay. Well, then I will put an end to the slavery. Oh yes, so there we are, conquer and hold the city of Valantis. And I think we may want to speak to this fellow as well. Oh, okay. The common people of Bravos call me the Black Pearl and talk in secret of my wicked ways and illustrious ancestors. Oh my goodness, who are your illustrious ancestors? Oh my goodness, okay, wow, this is pretty cool. Wow. Well, I should conquer Valyria? Should I? <laughs> oh my goodness. Maybe. Let's do it. Yes! There we are, we've gained some renown and relation with Bravos itself. That's pretty nice. And... Oh my, meet me by the balcony? I don't know where the balcony is, and why did I think about that immediately? Okay, never mind. <laughs> we will not be doing that just yet. I would like to conquer Volantis first, and it appears that Bravos has a lot of things that I may need to avoid in this particular area. So, yes, nevertheless, we will be heading on to Volantis and putting an end to the slavery that is dominating the city. Okay, well... As a result, I will be heading down here and taking a look at how many they actually have stationed, because you never know, we may have quite a few issues in terms of taking them down. But of course, I do need to make my way down there first, and I'm hoping that I will be rather quick, although this particular area right here, from Bravos to Volantis, is a huge, huge area, and I'm not entirely sure how long it's going to take me, but nevertheless, it appears that we have a real-time event that I have not seen before, so this is going to be rather cool. My lord, we captured the attacker. This is the man who attacked one of your messengers, who is now lying seriously injured, says one of your men. This doesn't show us in the best of light. The messenger was under your protection. But the attacker has an interesting story, and his wish was to tell it to you before he was executed. My lord, I would never have thought of attacking your messenger, but that man wished to sleep with my young daughter for the night. Of course, his offer was refused. However... He never accepted the answer. 
entered my house with his three friends and robbed my dear daughter, laughing that you, my lord, would never believe a farmer's word. I tried what I could think of, and I regret that I seriously injured him while he was under your personal protection, but a father must protect his only child. Please be reasonable to your humble servant. Oh my goodness, yes, that accent. My apologies. <laughs> okay, so, the messenger was under my protection. You and your family will be executed at dawn. That sounds reasonable. No. <laughs> okay, the messenger is important, but I will be reasonable with you. Your family will not be punished. It is only you who will hang. That's even more reasonable. No, definitely not. While the messenger is important, I would have done the same. You can go. This king has spoken. What? Throw the messenger out on the streets? How dare you abuse the peasantry? Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. We are going to do the lowest option right here. I believe that's probably going to be the best. Oh, well, we gain honor, but our party loses 10 morale. I do not believe that we are actually going to have any issues with our morale, as you can see here. It is excellent, so... That should be fine in actuality. Now, Carver has actually advanced in level, which is wonderful, so we should be able to equip him with the cleaver. So, let us go. Strength increase. Get him some more iron flesh. And he is only one strength away from being able to use our plate chest piece that we had previously. So, that is going to be wonderful to see him wielding that, that is for sure. And here we are. Balanced War Cleaver. Oh, yes. So, I will be removing this, and I think we'll probably remove everything from him, because I'm not entirely sure, but I would like him to be using a two-handed for the majority of the time now. Now, there's the Pot of Wildfire, which I was talking about previously. So, that is going to be wonderful to see in a siege at some point. Not entirely sure which one, but yes, there we are. That will be fine. Well... By all means, just tell me in the comments whether you think a balanced arming sword and a rounded wooden shield would be wonderful for Carver to wield, but as he is a little bit crazy, I thought it would be a little better for him to stay in character and have no shield whatsoever, no regard for his own safety, of course. So, yes, maybe that would be something to think about, and wow, we have actually just brought a load of recruits to Lordsport by the looks of things. 50 recruits, very good work right there. Thankfully, all of our recruiters are not being harassed at all, and I suppose that is because we are not at war with anyone, but mm, I thought that maybe some wildlings would turn up and see to it that they were taken down. So, whoa, there's another recruiter. Very nice. So, here we are. We have a real-time event. You are traveling through the forest, and you suddenly spot a lot of mushrooms. Oh my, they're covered in spider's web and with an awful smell. We are going to pass by those. I believe they're probably going to be poisonous. Of some sort, perhaps? We will see. Okay, so I have never at all in my entire playthrough seen what the Volantines use in terms of units. And, oh. Okay. It appears they favor archers. A lot. Oh my goodness. Yes, they favor archers so much that they have 71 elite mounted archers. 146 veteran mounted archers. Oh, okay, so they're cavalry units. It appears that they're actually like the Kurgets in native, perhaps. So, hmm. Let us head in here, shall we? I just want to head in and maybe buy a little bit of food just to hopefully help us out with... Oh my, not too much, do they? Yes, they don't have too much here. Well, hopefully that will help us out with some of the sieging. And, whoa! Whoa! They have some pretty reasonably unique weaponry as well, which is rather cool. And, yeah, I think we're probably just going to be heading in after this. I would like to check the tavern, just in case the Unsullied fellow is here. Okay. Ah, okay, so unluckily enough, we have not been able to find anyone of that sort, but we will be taking this sellsword halberdier, because halberdiers, they're cool. They can do some really nice overhead devastating attacks. And I suppose now we will be, I guess, declaring war against these fellows. So, yeah, what we're going to do is take on that nearby patrol and take a look at some of their units as well, because it would be a rather nice test to determine how good they actually are. And we will now be taking the field, because I would not like to charge into them. I would like them to come to us. And, whoa, okay. This is a new map set, that is for sure. 
we are fighting in a swamp of sorts. So, hmm. Let us get ready, I suppose. Get our archers in a good position. I would like our archers to potentially... Oh, yes, they are all on horses, aren't they? So they're going to be incredibly fast to get to us. And that reminds me, let us charge in our infantry, charge in our cavalry, and do as much damage as we can to them before they are able to wind up again. And how did I not hit that fellow? Okay, well, nevertheless, they... <laughs> wow. Yes, it appears that some of these guys are absolutely beastly. I'm pretty sure that that fellow right there that just took out my horse is a cataphract unit, because I believe we do have cataphracts in another mod that I have been playing, or at least I have played in the past, and they, as I remember, were, yes, as you can see, quite deadly. They have just taken out Berengar. How dare you! Berengar is one of our most valued assets. Well, maybe not yet, but he still is part of our army. <laughs> oh yes, there we are. Okay, so that's not too bad. At least we did get to see what their units were capable of. So, hmm. It is not necessarily boding too well for us at the moment because they do have a huge amount of archers. Thankfully, they have no cataphract units in here. So, I think we're going to be heading in. Okay, so... Here we are, we are now besieging Volantis, and we are going to be preparing the ladders, which we have seven in engineering to be able to build very quickly indeed. So hopefully no vassals from Volantis will actually turn up, and it appears that they have not. So we are lucky enough in that regard, however we are incredibly afraid of the amount of archers they have, or at least I am, and let us just hope that many of our people will be able to raise their shields. And on that note, I removed Carver's shield, so this is going to be rather amusing. Although, I do not really feel too good about the fact that Carver is probably going to get absolutely massacred, although he is moving relatively fast because he has some lighter armor on than most. And, oh my, a lot of fire and particle effects right here. And, oh, this is not going to bode well. Okay, come on, guys. Elite Reach Crossbowman, I must rely on your efforts right here. Maybe we should just charge up. I think we should probably just charge because I think in the end these archers are probably going to outshoot and outdamage our archers. So hopefully we'll be able to just get up there and completely outmatch them in melee combat. That is hopefully going to be the plan that we will be using here. However, as you can see, we will take a couple of casualties on the way there as our units are probably not going to have the ranged capability to be able to deal with some of the skirmishers and various mounted units that they have. But it appears we're doing not a bad job so far, I must admit. I was actually going to assume that we were going to take a huge amount of casualties, but it appears that infantry will conquer all <laughs> by the looks of things. But yes, thankfully enough, our infantry and cavalry line right here is progressing up the ladder, slowly but surely. And I will be able to head in in just a moment. I'm actually wondering, could I head in here? Is this a destructible... No, okay. A little unfortunate, but nevertheless, we are still heading up the wall here. Oh yes, we will be in there in just a moment, fellows. And, ooh, look at that! Carver has actually gotten a kill. He has not died yet, which is remarkable in itself. And I suppose that is probably why he is a crazy person. Anyone that is sane enough to run in there with a two-handed would probably not survive. So, <laughs> yes, we will be hopefully seeing him live until the end of the siege and congratulate him ourselves, although we are starting to suffer quite a few casualties there, so hopefully that will not start a trend in terms of losing quite a few of our units. Whoa, this is a huge city. Look at that! Wow, okay. That is pretty incredible for a mod. Seriously, to do that, that is a huge town! Of course, probably most of it is not available for us to actually walk into, but maybe it is. I mean, we don't know. I think as soon as we conquer it, it might be an idea to take a look around and maybe walk around the streets. And we will see how many areas we can actually access. Of course, I cannot jump down here, unfortunately. I was hoping that we'd be able to jump down here and then go up those stairs. 
but it appears that we may have to uh, suffer the same fate that we had at Pike. Although, at Pike, this was incredibly difficult, and for some reason this was a lot easier than I imagined it would be, so yes, it appears that we're not too bad, and thank you for all of your comments and information about the Volantis Siege as well, because I believe many of you did say that the actual siege itself is not too difficult if you charge straight in. So I assumed, as soon as I saw my cavalry charging in, that I would just let them charge in and eventually we would win the day, I suppose. Maybe that would be a better way of saying it, but oh my. Okay, we have lost eight. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I must just say that that is remarkable because I really did think that we were going to lose a huge amount. And I must just mention that the damage modifiers are still on the maximum that they can be, so yes, us losing 8 is not due to the fact that I am playing on a lower difficulty. It is all up to our, I suppose, Northern Sergeants, which are currently doing an amazing job at taking down these skirmishers right here. And I'm actually wondering, should I tell our units to move back? That might be an idea. Let's do that, shall we? So, let's get a couple of our nearby soldiers to move back. And, yes. Maybe a couple more? No, it appears that I'm not able to do that. So, let us target our infantry instead. And, oh my goodness, no! Oh, wow, there's too many units on this little platform right here. Oh, no. We're going to have a couple of issues, perhaps. Okay, cavalry units, can you move back as well? I really wish I could just jump off here, oh my goodness. Okay, well, I can only hope that our units will eventually decide to move back because we are currently in a bottleneck and that is limiting the amount of damage that we're able to output, but it appears that maybe we have now forced them into the bottleneck and we'll be able to do a lot more damage to them as a result. So now, as you know, we do have 387, isn't it? Yes, 387 enemies currently here, and we have only taken out 179. So another 200, and then we will be where we want to be. And Carver is continuing to gain kills right here, which is wonderful. So what I will be doing is, as I am in a completely dead place right here. I am not able to move this way, that way, any which way whatsoever, so I will be cutting away and when we have successfully pushed through this tower here, or they have pushed us back, which is a little unlikely, but it could happen, I will be cutting back. Okay, so it appears that we may have broken through their lines, as you can see here. We have a huge amount of corpses from the Volantines here, and we will now be charging everyone in, as I was attempting to use the nearby soldier command to hopefully gather a little bit of a space for us to be able to head in through, and unfortunately we were not able to accomplish that before my units had taken out a majority of their units. Now, as you can see, there have been 352 casualties on the enemy side, and we have, well, 10, basically. We have 25 wounded, but 10 have died, so, yeah, it's rather minor, I must admit, considering we've taken out so many of these units, but, oh my. Really? These fellows are actually pretty deadly, to me at least. They're seeming to be rather useless in comparison to our units, so not entirely sure what's going on there, but it appears that as we go into first person, they will be the last units that we will be able to take down in this particular endeavor. And as you can see, we are able to completely explore the town as much as we deem it necessary, I suppose. So this is amazing, I must admit. Look at that. You can actually go all the way around here, and unfortunately I'm a little bit trapped. So, yes, it appears we'll just have to wait here until we're able to leave, I suppose. <laughs> there we are. Nine Renown is our reward, which is a little bit less than I would have liked, but yes, for taking out 381, that is a little unfortunate. And Carver was almost able to beat our seven kills right there, which is pretty impressive, I must admit. So, let us take these fellows right here and then head onward. Now, we do have a couple of these horses here, but I don't believe I will be taking any of this loot, will I? No. I won't be taking any of this loot because I will let our companions do it. 
and then we will obviously sell immediately. So I would like to have Volantis for myself, but I'm not entirely sure whether that would make any difference to the quest. I will take it for myself, because we are here, and we may as well. 6100 I think we'll do that, even though we don't necessarily need the cash. It would be rather nice. And we will leave and then sell 30 items from Brynden, then right there, 1,800 dinars, which is absolutely amazing. And then, I suppose, we will wait here for some time and hope that the quest will somehow complete, or this fellow and a lot of other vassals will turn up and see fit to siege it. But, as a result of their actions, I will be ending this episode off here, and so... Next time on A Clash of Kings, we will be defending against the likes of some Valantines, as you can see here. Oh, it appears that Dunstan, oh my goodness, look at him. Dunstan has defected from the Iron Islands to the Valantines, so it appears we will be fighting him once again among other vassals right here. So, I thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.